me after watching SummerSlam last night. I'm going to bed. Welcome back to the channel. And for those of you who are new here, hello. We are gonna be talking about SummerSlam. <laughs> Overall, I have to say, this premium live event was a disappointment. It was very mid for me, very middle of the road for me. It didn't, it honestly at some parts, like certain matches didn't even feel like premium live event matches. It was, it was disappointing. The crowd in Detroit was whack. Like they would sleep half the time. And I'm just like, wake up, oh folks. Like, I know it's late, but it's not that late. Like, y'all bored. And it like it took everything <laughs> for the competitors in the ring to like make these cats like wake up. This was one of the matches that I thoroughly enjoyed. And I'm so glad that WWE started off SummerSlam with this, like, based off of what I saw with how freaking the crowd was in Detroit, like they, WWE needed to start off the premium live event with some, with some sort of excitement, with this type of match, the freaking high risks maneuvers. This definitely Ricochet and Logan Paul came in and they delivered. Logan Paul was so focused on just getting that heel heat, getting some sort of reaction from the fans, which I feel like was very important and very smart considering the type of crowd that we had. Ricochet was so focused on executing these high risk maneuvers, but like both of these men just ate. Fans were eating the junk up, including moi. It was smart to have Logan Paul pair up with Ricochet because like honestly, Logan Paul has really exceeded my expectations. Like regardless of how I feel about him personally, he is so talented and not only is he able to do those high spots, but he knows, he, he's learned the fundamentals of wrestling and how to get heat from the crowd. And he's so athletic and agile and I, and I respect him for that. And with Ricochet, he is so seasoned and he's really great at taking care of his competitors, especially Logan Paul, who's doing, like they both do those high flying spots. It's just certain parts within the match. I was I was like clinching and freaking out. Like there was this Spanish fly that they did on the apron. Like it was dope, but it was this close from not landing right. Yeah, I was like, someone's gonna get hurt. Someone's gonna get hurt. Even though <laughs> the ending was pretty cheap, like it was, it was like Dollar Tree cheap with Logan Paul getting slipped brass knuckles to be able to hit Ricochet without the ref even seeing it and being able to pin him for the one, two, three to get the W. Like, besides that, I'm glad that they took that approach compared to it being like a clean win because they've been building up Ricochet within this feud and Ricochet, I would have been mad if they if it would have been a clean W. I would have been like, okay, Ricochet deserves better. But considering how he did that, I'm wondering if they're gonna continue this feud, which would make sense because come on, like Logan Paul got a got a dirty W. The camera at the end of the match when Logan Paul won, they put the camera on Samantha, and I'm telling you, like this woman, she deserves a nominee. Like Oscar nominee, like the motion on her face, like she like she wanted to cry, but she was also pissed off, like she wanted to leap into that ring and choke out Logan Paul, like it was so good. It just added a great realistic element to the match itself. And not to mention the last time Logan Paul actually had a W was last SummerSlam against The Miz. <laughs> so this is also significant. Not only because, you know, he, he cheated, but also because uh, SummerSlam 2022 with his match against The Miz, he won. So now, SummerSlam 2023, he wins against Ricochet. Are they trying to set up this man with a SummerSlam streak? I don't know. Now, surprisingly, for those of you who have been watching me for a while and watched my previous videos, I was not looking forward to this Brock Lesnar versus Cody Rhodes match. I was not. I was like, okay, this is gonna be the last match that these two are going to have. It's going to end the feud. It's gonna be done. They even had the weird video package with the weird music on again. Like I was just like, let's get this sucker over with. 
but this ended up being my favorite match of the night. Thoroughly confused with my own self. But the storytelling in this match was so good. And it was so realistic compared to the other matches. Where Don't even get me started with the Night of Champions. With freaking Cody Rhodes having the, the, the arm brace titanium. The magical Superman arm that you just hit in Brock Lesnar. And take it. Like that whole thing. Like this match. I feel like out of the three that these two have had. This one was the best. And this is saying something considering, no offense to Brock Lesnar, I have I have a newfound respect for him for various reasons. With his matches, they're very they're very simple, okay? Like you're gonna get an F5, you get it, you're gonna get a German suplex, you're gonna get any sort of suplex. If you're able to use weapons, he's gonna th he's gonna throw things at you. Like he's going to F you up, he's gonna break your arms, he's going to tear you up. Like it's this there's a very formulated method that Brock Lesnar has in his matches. You know what you're gonna get, but you add Cody Rhodes into it and it's a whole different beast. Like there are points in this match where like Brock Lesnar continuously, every time Cody Rhodes would get back into the ring, beat the count, beat the count up. Cause he, he, he was out of the ring multiple times. He would get back in the ring and Brock would just look so just like he's so, like literally he's pouring and drenched in sweat and he would freak up Cody some more and throw him right back out of the ring and just wait for the ref to count to 10 <laughs> and every single time Cody would barely beat the dang count like Cody Cody is he's he's a like He's my dog, like he's relentless. Like he just kept freaking going. And the crowd was really into this match, especially when Cody would beat the cow, getting back into the ring to continue getting beat up by Brock Lesnar. I, I've always loved that shift in a match when Cody is just like, I'm tired of getting my A whip. And he's starting doing, oh, oh my gosh, I'm starting to remember this like match like, so vividly that Cody cutter that he did off the ropes like that junk like it like that junk had air like that junk was like I feel like that was one of the highest Cody cutters I've seen him do it was so good and he was busting out the old moves giving me Dustin Rhodes vibes like it was dope like oh my gosh but 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 um what I don't understand, I don't think anyone will be able to explain it to me for me to understand. Um, why wasn't Cody disqualified? <laughs> I, I don't get it. This man hit Brock Lesnar with steel steps and the referee saw this. It was in clear sight and he did nothing about it. He was like, oh, it's okay. Like. I was, wait, like, so we could use weapons up in here? I was so confused, they just let that go. It wasn't like a specific stipulation of this match, it was a regular match, it was their third and final match, like, Cody should have been disqualified from that. So I was, I was confused, but I, I looked past it because of the, how good the match was, but I mean, I gotta say something about it. When Brock Lesnar f 5 Cody Rhodes, into the announcement table and was still able to get back up. And Cody was able to end this thing with Brock and pick up the W in this match, finally. But the storytelling in here, it was, it was, it was great. Between these two, this was the best storytelling. But the only thing I can think about now when it comes to Cody is where do we go from here? Where does Cody Rhodes go from here? What is he going to do now, now that he has beaten Brock Lesnar? Now that this feud is done. I love how after the match, Brock Lesnar showed respect to Cody Rhodes. I mean, WWE put Brock as the gatekeeper. So, I mean, it makes sense. Cody slayed the Beast Incarnate and Brock Lesnar extended his hand gave him a handshake and then they hugged. But now, like, where do we go from here with Cody? Like, who who is Cody's next opponent? Who is going to 
<laughs> terrorize Cody Rhodes now as he is still in his pursuit for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship that Roman Reigns has. Is it me or were you surprised to see Omos at SummerSlam? Like when is the last time we, we hadn't seen this man on TV for months and when I saw MVP come out there to announce Omos, I'm like what the, what the, what the what is we doing here? What, what I thought Triple H got rid of this man. Like, what is he still doing here? But he was there. And I'm telling you, like, it, as Michael Cole loves to say, it was a pandemonium in that ring. And, of course, Omas, being as humongous as he is, was throwing out a whole bunch of people. He threw out freaking JD McDonough, which sucks because I wanted to see a little bit more from him. Like, we, we don't even see JD McDonough on TV that much. This book got thrown out already. Threw out <laughs> JD, threw out Apollo Crews. Throughout Rick Boogs, like they were just they were just bodies, okay, in the ring that Omas needed to throw out. There was a whole bunch of people in this battle royale. What was like 20, 30? Like, jeez. What I liked about this battle royale was that it wasn't it, it like it had it had substance. And what I mean by that is there were different feuds being addressed within this match and Especially with the eliminations that happened with, you know, Santos Escobar and Austin Theory. Oh my gosh. Then you have uh, Karrion Cross helping <laughs> AJ. Like he was like, Karrion Cross had already gotten eliminated. But then Karrion Cross on ringside was able to aid in eliminating AJ Styles. You know, they already have their beef and everything. So. That was dope. And then you have LA Knight and Sheamus. They had their match on Friday Night SmackDown. So then that was readdressed. There was a lot of stuff going on, but it made sense. It gave the crowd more reasons to be invested. And it was pretty dope that it was down to LA Knight and Sheamus in this match. Because like I said, they had their SmackDown match. And the spot that they tried to do on the ropes on Friday didn't work out, but then they were able to do that sucker again during the battle royale, and they were able to pull that jung off. And with LA Knight throwing out Sheamus and winning the battle royale, like the crowd went off. And I was happy. I had a feeling that LA Knight was going to win this. Happy that LA Knight won, but what does this mean for him? Like what, like that was my whole thing with this whole battle royal, the Slim Jim battle royal, like, what does LA Knight get out of this other than momentum? Like what, what, what does he get? Like there's no trophy, there's no shot at a championship. Like what is this? Like what was, what is the, what do you get out of it? What are they gonna do next? Because LA Knight does not have a, a po like a like a feud, like a definitive feud that can be elevated from this, that can be birthed from this. So WWE Creative is really gonna have to figure out where to place LA Knight next. He's got this momentum, he's finally being recognized, and I guess this battle royale was just a recognition of, yes, LA Knight, you're going to the moon. I'm using Cameron Grimes' thing. I don't know why. It just it just works in this instance. Who are they gonna put him up against? Like, are they gonna keep this whole thing going on with Sheamus? Okay, could, but we need a little bit more substance. When I tell y'all I was pissed, disgusting. I was red hot. I was big mad when I saw that MMA rules match. What the hell is even that? I tell y'all this, it was a disappointment in of itself. Like, that match was whack. Now, there's people out there, they were loved it. It was great. I'm sorry, I don't. Like, it sucked. It sucked. And let's just start from the beginning. First and foremost, when these two women were coming out in their entrances, the crowd wasn't even four in the first place. Like, they were asleep. By this time, these mofos were asleep. I don't know if Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes match took all of their energy out of them and they just needed to rest. But 
<laughs> it was dead, they didn't care. And even within the match, the crowd was not feeling it until like towards the end of the match. For me personally, I was so looking forward to this match. The video packages that they had leading up to this match at SummerSlam, I felt like those interviews that Ronda and Shayna had Amazing. I, I thought this there was a great way to build up this feud between best friends turned enemies. Like I this it was just, it, the lead up was so dope. And then you get to this match. And I was expect I don't know, maybe I was expecting too much from WWE. I don't know why I was expecting Octagon. I don't know why I was expecting different lighting. I was expecting them to add on more, but yes, it is an MMA rules match. Like it's still gonna have an aspect of wrestling like it, it it felt more like a slow pro wrestling match like it, it the, the pace was so slow and i wasn't feeling it and it i felt like this did not do justice for what they were building up and it was a disappointment and I felt like Shayna Baszler deserved much more than that. And I know darn well <laughs> Ronda Rousey is pissed about this. She's like, I'm trying to put my sis over. And this match, I know Ronda pissed. She's like, I'm about to leave. And I'm trying to give something to my best friend. I'm trying to give something to Shayna. Like, she deserves it. She's been working hard in WWE. And this is what we give her? Like, what? And then Shayna Baszler's arm getting freaked up. You got the doctors coming out trying to check and see if she's okay. That, she, like, with a match, because let's, let's be real, it wasn't an MMA fight. It didn't feel like it. Like, it felt like a wrestling match with MMA aspects added to it. MMA moves added to it with <laughs> Shayna Baszler, her arm getting checked out by the doctors. It slowed down an already slow match even more. What the freak am I watching? Now with <laughs> the way Shayna Baszler put Ronda Rousey in that Kirifuda clutch, <laughs> that girl passing out. <laughs> oh my gosh, like that, I'm glad that Shayna Baszler got the W, but it just, the way this match was put together, it could have been better. And then you add on the crowd being dead sleep, not the F out. It just made the match even more just almost unbearable. Now this intercontinental championship match between Gunther and Drew McIntyre, it was a good match, but I can't help but to compare it to the triple threat match with Gunther versus Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus at WrestleMania. Like that match, that triple threat match for the IC title at WrestleMania was dope. It was so dope, it was so good. And comparing it to, I can't help myself because two of the three guys were in the same match. So. With this Intercontinental Championship match at SummerSlam, like I said, it was good, but I don't know. It was just something about it that didn't, it didn't do it for me, I don't know. These two powerhouses were just freaking each other up. Like, the chops were insane, and I knew that they were gonna be insane, especially with Gunther. Like, da 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 he loves to, he loves to make chests red. Like, that's just what he does. But then you got Drew McIntyre, and he's come back, and I had a feeling, and I was hoping, I was hoping that Gunther was going to retain. Now, I'm not saying that Drew doesn't deserve the IC title. He's amazing, but I feel like I want him to go above the IC title, if you know what I'm saying. Like, if anything, I would love for Drew McIntyre to go for the World Heavyweight Championship. But we already got stuff going on with the World Heavyweight Championship, so that's not even a question right now. But 
I'm glad that Gunther did retain the IC championship, not only because I'm just not ready for him to not be champion anymore, but also because WWE is trying to have Gunther's IC reign surpass Honky Tonk Man. So I, I'm, I'm glad that they're doing this for Gunther because he has been my favorite, one of, if not my favorite, intercontinental champion. But the way, like, like Gunther won clean. Like there was no help. There was no. There was no Ludwig Kaiser. There was no Giovanni Vinci. Like Gunther got this W clean against Drew McIntyre. Everything that they put their bodies through in this match, like the crowd, they started waking up a little bit. Like they, I feel like they needed this match to be like, wake up, mofos. Like they needed to wake up the, the Detroit crowd because I feel like this helped them. But the way Drew lost, I, I feel like Drew, one of two things, either uh, Drew is turning heel, which I don't, I'm not interested in seeing heel Drew McIntyre again. Like I'm, I like him as a face. So either they, WWE is trying to make him turn heel or Drew is trying to leave. I don't know what it is. Hopefully, I'd rather Drew McIntyre turn heel than for him to leave WWE. Cause I remember before he wasn't happy, contract, and with him coming back, I was super excited. But I'm wondering what WWE can do with Drew. They're, like he's so talented, and he's like, oh my goodness, he ugh. Like I just want him to have a world title again. I feel like he deserves better. I feel like throughout this SummerSlam, there were there were a lot of instances where I was saying to myself, this wrestler deserves better. Oh my gosh, dare I say? Dare I say, it is so close to, like, for me, so close to just, like, going beyond <laughs> the Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes match because, not only because of the story, but just these two, Finn and Seth, have so much history with one another. And, oh my gosh, like, there's just so much stuff to talk about when it comes to this match. I really wanted Finn Balor to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Like, I had it in my mind that this dude was going to snatch this belt from Seth. Like, I, I, re I really did not have any second thoughts about it. Like, I, I just knew that Finn was going to win, and I knew that <laughs> Judgment Day was going to be just—they were going to be stunting. Like. But I was so wrong. And surprisingly so. The reason why I was wrong was because of the Judgment Day. Well, because of Finn Balor being stubborn. But also because of the Judgment Day. But oh my gosh, like, it's this match, this match, it was I, the best way to describe it, other than amazing, was methodical. Even within the first few minutes, Finn Balor was focused on getting payback. He, Finn Balor was so focused on putting pressure and pain on Seth freaking Rollins' arm. It takes you back to SummerSlam 2016 when, like even freaking Finn Balor, he did the same exact move that Seth freaking Rollins did to him during that SummerSlam to injure. He was trying to injure Seth the same way Seth injured him during their match when it was the Universal Championship match. And now we're freaking in the World Heavyweight Championship match and Finn is like, I'ma do to you what you did to me. It just ties everything together. It's just that the seamless thread throughout their feud. Side note, like I love that Finn had like this little like, this writing on his, on his shoulder, the same shoulder that got like freaked up. Seth freaking Rollins wearing the same vest that he wore at the 2016 SummerSlam. These two are so good. Like, oh, the chemistry between these two men, the storyline, oh my gosh. They took the opportunity to take advantage of the history that they have between <laughs> each other and they capitalized on that and they just focused more on elevating that story of what they had in the past and bringing it back to the present and just expanding on it. And I love that. It's just, just what good wrestlers 
do, man. The whole thing with Damien Priest coming out with his Money in the Bank briefcase, I was just like, no, this mofo is not coming out. He did this last time at Money in the Bank and he effed stuff up and all this stuff like that, but he actually came out to help Finn Balor because he, he hit Seth freaking Rollins. He didn't even use the, the briefcase. He popped Seth freaking Rollins in the face with his fist, even with the referee not looking and trying to help Finn Balor get the W. And then you have, all of a sudden you got Mammy, Rhea Ripley, and ex Dom coming out from the crowd and them trying to help. And e like even the thing with like, Damien wanted Finn Balor to use his Money in the Bank briefcase to capitalize to blindside Seth freaking Rollins to essentially cheat behind the referee's back. But Finn was like, nah, cuz I don't wanna do it. I wanna win this fair square. This is seven years in a mother freaking bank. You don't ruin this for me. Even with Finn Balor hitting Seth freaking Rollins with a pedigree, still didn't. Still didn't do it. Still didn't do nothing to him. Damien throwing in the briefcase and Finn Balor being distracted. Seth freaking Rollins able to hit him with the stomp and then pick up the W pin for the one, two, three and retain the World Heavyweight Championship. The look on, <laughs> the look on Damien Priest's face, he's just like, you dumb mother freaker. Like if, he, if his eyes could talk, they're at their pinnacle right now. Judgment Day is at their pinnacle and they're literally about to just go down. Like the, the breaking up of the Judgment Day is truly on the horizon at this point, given where like Finn Balor and Damien Priest, no matter what, they just do not seem to be Oh, on the same page no matter what. I'm wondering what is going to happen next. Like I know like Finn Balor is is he's got tunnel vision when it comes to the World Heavyweight Championship and tunnel vision when it comes to destroying Seth freaking Rollins. This is not over. This is not over. This is going to keep going and I hope so because every time these two have matches they put on bangers so like but then you add in the aspect of Damian Priest and him having the money in the bank briefcase just waiting for the opportunity to cash in it adds a whole new element so you're just like is Finn Balor ever going to get the world heavyweight championship and if for some crazy reason he does which I was hoping he would not summer say but he did how long is he going to keep that championship when is it going to be the time where Damian Priest actually cashes in? I don't care what no one has to say. This match was a disappointment. <laughs> disappointment. What? What the? F I might even talk about who won. I'm not even talking about who cashed in and won. I'm just talking about the match itself. The meat and potatoes of this triple threat match for the WWE Women's Championship. Like, I've, I've read somewhere where they were saying the chemistry, they have built up with one another is apparent in this match. I didn't see that. I'm sorry, I did not see, if anything, it just seemed off. They were trying to figure things out and at one point comes in my mind with Charlotte, like she threw Asuka and Bianca Belair into the corner, the turnbuckles. And at one point, Charlotte's like fixing her clothes and the camera has to like go away from her. And we just, we're literally sitting there waiting for Charlotte Flair to fix her clothes. And thankfully, <laughs> Asuka's like, well, I'm gonna capitalize on this. And I'm gonna start choking Bianca Belair till, you know, Charlotte's ready to, you know, <laughs> do her move on us. And I'm just like, what the freak is this? Like. What 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 is going on, y'all? It was something off about it. I don't know. And 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 let me just say this real quick. Y'all can argue with me about it. You just gonna be arguing with yourself. I've always thought, especially when it's a triple threat match, the champion should come out last. Why did Asuka come out second? Unacceptable! Where's the respect for Asuka? Where's the respect for the Empress of Tomorrow? What the F is going on here? I don't care if she was gonna lose the belt. I don't care if she was losing the belt. Like, where's the respect? Her championship reign 
has has not been to my liking and I felt like WWE could have done more with her. I don't think it's Asuka's fault. I don't care if she doesn't speak impeccable perfect English. I can understand what the woman's saying every single time. Turn up your volume. Like it was wet. I'm so pissed. I'm so pissed about this. But besides that part, with Bianca Belair coming out last and like, let me just say this. I get it. WWE has been sold to Endeavor. I get it. Uh, uh, like, WWE has to make their coins. I understand that. But the amount, <laughs> the amount of product placement in this premium live event was crazy. Dare I say it was more <laughs> than WrestleMania? <laughs> It was more product placement than WrestleMania, like with <laughs> Bianca Belair coming out and she got the C4 in her hand and she's like, it's just, it was three much. And Bianca Belair ended up winning the women's championship. I mean, granted, it was like for a minute or so, but she still won it. Um, what I will say, speaking of her winning for a little bit, what I liked was that even, oh, when she got injured, I think uh, Charlotte had thrown her out of the ring and Bianca had hit her knee on the steel steps and I heard that sucker that sucker was loud and you just hear her scream and like she got freaked up the referees everybody coming out trying to see if she's okay like they was trying to take her to the back and then the woman comes back out and is like uh -uh, I'm trying to finish this match like I love that they added that aspect to it because this woman let us not forget she has had such an historic reign it's like she did a phenomenal job over 400 days as champion it she did as a raw women's champion and i felt like them adding that to her that was showing some sort of respect and homage to her because of everything she's done for the Raw Women's Championship before her passing that torch to Asuka. And you know how they do triple threat matches in WWE. You always have, you know, you have like a combination of the opponents. You always throw one out and then you'll have two in there fighting until the third one comes back in and they switch it out. Like they, that's what they did. That the same formula that WWE usually does when they have a triple threat match. That's what they did. But with EO Sky cashing in, after Bianca Belair winning the women's championship on an injured Bianca Belair at that. Bailey trying to interfere, her getting freaked up, didn't work. But then Io going in, the genius of the sky, cashing in and being able to pin for the one, two, three on Bianca Belair to win the women's championship i was so happy i was like you know what i was mad that bianca belair won the, the won the women's championship at first but then when eo cashed in and won it from her i was like okay i'll take this even though i'm mad that asuka lost even though i already knew that asuka was gonna lose i thought charlotte was gonna win the match i really did i thought she was going to win it just it had it they had the writings all over it so i mean I can say WWE threw me for a loop. So this was good storytelling right here. Like they threw me, they they had me going. They had me going and I was wrong. But EO Sky becoming women's champion. I'm, I'm happy. And with Dakota Kai coming out to celebrate with Bailey and EO, Damage Control being together again. Like it is such a significant moment considering that last year at SummerSlam, Io Sky, Dakota Kai, and Bailey made their <laughs> they made their entrance. They made their surprise appearance last year at SummerSlam after the Bianca Belair versus Becky Lynch match, I believe. I'm happy about it. And considering I'm hearing rumors that Kyrie Sane is signed back with WWE, will we get freaking Kabuki Warriors back and them do it the right way? Especially since, I mean, WWE doesn't even know what the F to do with Asuka anymore. Like, did they, oh, gosh, don't get me started on that. I don't, I don't, oh my gosh, I don't know. This whole thing, I need, I need some Asuka and EO Sky matches. Like, I need some of that. And then you throw in Kyrie saying, like, they got history. I'm, I want that. Now, 
Let me also say this, knowing that Bianca Belair is one injured and two, she won the women's championship for like a minute or so and then lost it. Now the prediction that I had on my SmackDown review is making even more sense. Now I'm like, okay, is this gonna be the perfect opportunity for Bianca Belair to turn heel? Like, is this girl gonna turn heel now? And is she gonna go with the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley and whoever else Bobby wants to recruit for his new faction and be with them? I would love to see it. Oh my gosh. I would love for them to name like their uh, group like Street Business or something like that. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Like, I hope Bianca Belair turns full heel and just, oh, I, I, oh, do something. I guess I had high expectations for this match. Not saying that the match wasn't good. The match was good. The match was good. I really did enjoy the match. Um, of course, the storyline is always top tier when it comes to the bloodline. But maybe I was expecting more in terms of like presentation. Maybe that I was expecting like a different feel, different lighting, maybe some props for tribal combat. But I mean, maybe. Oh, but hey, my bad. But this match, I'm telling you, this was definitely worthy to be called the main event because when all that junk that Jay Uso was talking on SmackDown, uh, I think it, it wasn't last SmackDown, it was the SmackDown before that, where he was talking about how he gonna use chairs on Roman, he gonna use tables on Roman, he gonna use everything that is around him. No rules. Tribal combat, no rules. He go take everything that he can to freak up Roman. He surely did. He surely did. He used all his props. And I feel like both Roman Reigns and Jey Uso did a phenomenal job telling this story in this match. Like, oh my gosh, the cheer, the amount of chairs. But given everything that happened towards the end of the match and after the match, that's what I really want to focus on right now. Um, Solo Sokoa coming out. Not surprised about that at all. But with Roman Reigns accidentally spearing Solo Sokoa instead of spearing Jey Uso, and then Solo and Roman having some tension. Having some tension? Solo looking like he wanna pop Roman, but he decides not to. Like, I'm tired of the teasing of this. When is Solo gonna F Roman Reigns up? When is Solo gonna go solo and be like, F you Trouble Chief, I'm is done. This is the last straw, I'm sick of it. When is this going to happen? I don't freaking know, but I thought I saw something. I saw a twinkle in Solo Sokoa's eye, but I guess I was wrong. With Jimmy Uso giving me retribution vibes. <laughs> Coming out of nowhere, grabbing Jay Uso's like as Jay was pinning Roman for the one, two, three about the win to become the undisputed WWE Universal Champion and to become the new Trouble Chief. No, Jimmy was like, F that, pulled this man out, pulled his old twin brother out of the ring. Then super kicks this mug in the face. Throws him back in the ring for Roman Reigns to finish him and retain the championship in his title. The Tribal Chief title. What the freak is WWE doing? I don't know. Maybe I am just a naive little kitten where I thought that this match between Roman Reigns and Jey Uso at SummerSlam was going to be the last straw. That it was going to end things. I, I can't believe that WWE decided to go this route with Jey Uso and, and Jimmy Uso being at odds. Jimmy, let us not forget, Jimmy was put in the freaking hospital because of Soul Sokol and Roman Reigns. And he comes back and he attacks Jey so that Roman Reigns can win. Yo, you just helped the one that effed you up a couple weeks ago. How stupid can you be? Like, I'm sorry, Jimmy, you stupid. You stupid. You're dumb, okay? Why would you do that? I don't care I don't want my brother to be tribal chief. I don't care what you feel like. Your brother had your back through and through. You whack, though. You whack. Like, I can't believe. Why would WWE do this? Like, I just feel like WWE just went backwards. They're just like, we need more time. We need we need to do more stuff with the bloodline. Like, we need, what? What is this, August? Okay, 
<laughs> September, October, November, December, 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 okay. We need a couple of months, okay? So let's just go backwards a little bit. And now let's have beef between Jimmy and Jay. I don't want to see the Usos break up. Granted, what else can the Usos as a union do in the tag team division? They've, they've, they've shattered so many records. They've done so many things in the tag team division. Like, what else can they do? I get that, but them breaking up? And them having a match against each other. Now, would I be watching that mofo when it happens? Well, duh. Why? Why would you do that? And, it, it's, uh, and I remember I said on Smack that I was just like, wait a minute. This whole thing with Jey Uso versus Solo Sokoa, this is a significant match to be had. And I didn't even go into further and saying like, they chose to have this brother versus brother thing on SmackDown, just a regular SmackDown. Granted, it was before SummerSlam, but it's on a regular TV show. But it's weird. It is so weird. I feel like WWE is literally trying to stretch out the bloodline story until that mother freaker just rips, snaps, breaks, <laughs> irrevocable damage. Like, I'm just, what else? can you do oh let's turn the usos against one another let's make jimmy uso look stupid and go back to the very people who put him in the hospital in the first place and the one who had his back and tried to avenge him let me just betray him real quick because you know i am the tribal chief i want to be the tribal chief so guys let me know what you thought about summer slayer like i said before it was it was giving it was giving mid. It was giving mid. There was there were highlights for me, but there were a lot of stuff that I and mean, there were a lot of bones to pick that I had with this premium live event. But you guys, let me know in the comments down below what you thought. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Signing off. Bye.